Hi, in this video I will show you how to install a full hot water priority system using an ideal Vogue boiler. Later on in the video I'll also take you to a real installation and I'll show you how I convert an S-Plan setup into domestic hot water priority system using an ideal Vogue boiler. What is an S-Plan? It's a traditional setup where you've got a heat only boiler or a system boiler with a two two port zone valves. So why would you want to convert this kind of a setup uh, into hot water priority? Well, the way this setup operates is hot water and heating are independent. So you can have hot water on its own, you can have heating on its own, or you can have both at the same time. However, those zone valves, they will turn the boiler on at the same switched life and the boiler will fire at the same flow temperature. And that causes a bit of an issue because for our hot water cylinder, we usually require at least 60 degrees of water heated up in the cylinder to take care of any potential bacterial growth. To achieve that, the flow temperatures might, be, might have to be a bit higher than 60 degrees. And quite often they might be too high for our central heating. And what it does, it makes the boiler work not very efficiently on central heating. And it turns out that if you look at S-Plan installed in the uh, real life out there, most of those setups only run at around 80% efficiency. And theoretically, those setups, those boilers are capable of much higher efficiencies of over 90%. To achieve those efficiencies, however, we need to be able to split the output of the boiler or the flow temperature for hot water, usually much higher, and much lower output or much lower flow temperature for central heating. However, on traditional S-Plan, we are unable to do it, simply because there's only one signal switching the boiler. The controls on the boilers, when the boiler fires, they don't distinguish between heating or hot water. Simply, the boiler is unaware what it's firing for. What we want to do, we want to be able to fire the boiler at the lowest possible flow temperature that still satisfies the heat loss of the property. At the same time, we want to be able to heat the hot water cylinder to temperatures of around 60 degrees Celsius. To be able to do that, we install what's called hot water priority systems. When the boiler will fire at usually much higher flow temperature for hot water cylinder, and it would not do heating while it recharges the cylinder. When the cylinder is satisfied, then the boiler fires for central heating, usually at lower temperatures, or we can use something called open therm, and weather compensation. So how do we achieve hot water priority? First of all, you need a suitable boiler because not all boilers can do it. Ideal Vogue can do it. I think every single Intergas boiler can do it. Some Oosterbosch boilers can do it. And also Wiesmann boilers can do it. The difficulty with hot water priority is that every single boiler manufacturer does it differently. The way Ideal Vogue does it is simply by having two different connections for switched life on the boiler uh, electrical connections by the PCB. There's switched life number one, that's for central heating, and there's switched life number two, that is for hot water output. If the boiler gets switched life to central heating only, it will fire with weather compensation and open therm if those are connected. If the boiler gets switched life on uh, connection number two, SL2, it fires at 80 degrees flow. If it gets switched life on both, it still fires at 80 degrees flow and it ignores weather compensation and it ignores open therm. So how do we achieve a full weather compensation with this boiler? If you look at this setup, this is your typical S-Plan uh, setup again, and you've got one normally closed zone valve for central heating, one normally closed zone valve for hot water and they operate independently or they can operate at the same time as well. So the way to change that system into hot water priority is simply by changing normally closed zone valve with one of these, which looks very similar with a normally open valve. You put that valve in place of a normally closed valve for central heating. And if you look at this system now, when both valves are not energized, the flow to hot water cylinder is closed and the flow to central heating is open. Now, since this normally open valve doesn't have an orange valve that could switch the boiler on, what you do, you simply 
remove your switched light from your room thermostat that used to go to the brown of the central heating zone valve and you move it straight to the boiler uh, switched life number two which is switched life for central heating. When there is central heating demand without hot water demand the room thermostat fires the boiler directly and both zone valves are not energized. Hot water zone valve is closed and heating zone valve is open and thermostat controls heating and sends the switched life to SL2 and the boiler will fire with open therm if it's connected and with weather compensation if it's connected as well. When there is call for hot water from the programmer, it sends switched life to the cylinder thermostat. The thermostat will send switched life to the hot water zone valve. The zone valve will open and the same switched life from the thermostat, we're going to connect our normally open central heating zone valve to the same connection. So we are connecting our normally open central heating zone valve to the brown of hot water cylinder zone valve. When thermostat on the cylinder calls for heat, it will do two things. It will open the valve going to the hot water cylinder and it will close the valve going to central heating. So what happens if you've got an S-Plan Plus, which is a, a plan that has multiple heating zones? Now, this gets a little bit more complicated. So if you look at the typical S-Plan Plus layout right here, uh, this is a layout that we'll actually be converting later on in this video. Uh, you can see that we've got uh, three normally closed zone valves, same as on S-Plan, but we've got additional zone valve in this case for underfloor heating. Now, we can't replace the heating zone valves with two normally open zone valves. This wouldn't work because we would lose independence of heating zones. So instead of doing that, what we have to do, we need to make sure that the flow coming from the boiler tees to two sides. On one side, it has to go directly to your hot water cylinder and on the other side it needs to go to all the heating zones. If you don't have that kind of a layout you might have to redo it. Once you've got this layout that on one side of the T coming from the boiler flow goes to the cylinder and all the, the other T goes to all the heating zones, all you have to do is to retain all the zone valves for all the heating zones and then you add additional normally open zone valve on the flow going to all the heating zones. So if you look here, this is the setup that shows exactly this layout. We haven't removed any zone valves, we just added an additional normally open zone valve on the flow going to all the heating zones. If any of it still sounds confusing to you, don't worry, because right now we are going out, I'm gonna get my tool back, we're gonna go to site, and you'll get to see how it's done step by step on site, so that should clear any potential confusion. Let's go. What we have here is an ideal Vogue 32 kilowatt system boiler connected to an S Plan Plus. So, like a standard S Plan, but it has more heating zones. So, it has one underfloor heating zone and two radiator zones plus a vented cylinder. So, what I'm gonna do, it's wired a bit differently to an S Plan. Instead of replacing heating zone valves with normally open valves, what we'll have to do. We'll have to make sure that the flow from the boiler, there's a T below on the flow of the boiler, one T goes straight to the cylinder and that zone valve is normally closed, it stays as is, and the other side of the flow goes to all the heating zones. And on that flow we're going to put one of these normally open uh, two-port valve. It's a bit different, it doesn't have a lever on it so we can't manually open it because it's normally open when it's not energized. And it only has three wires, we've got earth, neutral and switched live and when the power goes to the valve the valve closes and the brown will be connected to the brown of the cylinder valve so when the cylinder valve opens it will also shut this valve restricting the flow to all the heating zones then we need to make sure that the orange from the uh, cylinder zone valve goes to switched life number two on the boiler which is hot water switched life and we need to make sure that all the oranges from all the zone valves and heating zones they go to uh, switch life number one which is central heating switch life and central heating switched life will fire the boiler with uh, open therm which we can't do here because we've got two nests they don't work on open therm on multi-zone but we have a weather compensator so what happens if there's only call for central heating the boiler fires for central heating for any of the zones are all at the same time and it fires with weather compensation. 
If there's only coal for hot water, the boiler fires at a maximum rate. If there are calls for heating from both zones, from hot water and any of the heating zones, what the manual for IDEA shows is that, uh, well, the boiler fires for both heating and hot water, but it ignores weather compensation and it ignores open therm. So your radiators would get really hot, they would get, you know, almost 80 degrees, and the cylinder would take longer to recharge. I think IDEA missed a trick, because they should have included that normally open zone valve on the flows to all the heating zones, and that way none of the heating zones will come on. So that's the principle of operation. The difficulty of this job, however, is there's T straight under the boiler and it goes to underfloor heating, then it goes to two heating zones and then it goes to the cylinder. So I have to reduce the pipe work the way that there is a first T going under the boiler goes straight on one side to all the heating zones, including underfloor heating, and then the other side of the T goes only to the cylinder and I need to find space to fit this valve somewhere which is gonna be it's gonna be tricky. We also have a bypass valve because no one bothered fitting bypass originally to this system, so we'll fit that bypass as well if we're redoing the pipe work. There's a nice upside down uh, hot water secondary circulation. A little longer than a few minutes later. So the plumbing is done, and uh, that's the best I could do with this massive spaghetti junction. And so it is what it is, you do the best you can. How it operates, let me explain it to you. So you have flow going here from the boiler. That flow goes to that T. This side of the T goes to a bypass and then continues to hot water cylinder. This side of the T, this goes to normally open zone valve that then feeds underfloor heating on this side and then it goes to this zone valve and this zone valve here. And those two zone valves, this is radiators, this is tower rails. If the hot water zone valve opens, this valve will shut, it will close and it will cut off the flow to all the heating zones. I just realized I'll have a bit of a problem here because those tower rails are coming on with hot water. So when there's hot water demand, this zone valve opens, which makes no sense because if they want tower rails to come on with hot water, they don't need a second zone valve. They just, just could have taken flow from the same flow that goes to the cylinder. 15 minutes later. So just spoke to the client and explain to them the situation with the towel rails not, not being able to come with hot water. What they suggested we do is that we wire this zone valve to the hot water on one of the nests. So they have some uh, level of control over towel rails in uh, the bathrooms. So I'm just in the middle of wiring it and I've got my hot water orange and luckily there's one core going spare to the boiler. So we're gonna use that for a switch light number two and we also wired this zone valve to the brown of a uh, hot water valve as well. We've wired the top a nest to switch the towel rails on that zone valve here on hot water demand. And if you program it on the second nest as hot water, you can program your times for uh, towel rails, but they'll be fired uh, with weather compensation. We've got weather compensation going here and we've got switched light for hot water on SL2, switched light for heating on SL1, and live neutral and earth. It's time to test it. And yeah, the boiler is ready for hot water, ready for heating. So now, if I turn hot water and heating, so both nests on, everything's on, and I make sure the thermostat on the boiler, on the cylinder, right here, is asking for heat. This should show uh, both heating and hot water demand on the boiler display. The valve kicked in. Although I've got demand on the boiler for heating and hot water, flow only goes to the hot water cylinder because that valve blocks everything. And the boiler fires at maximum rate, so it's gonna go to 80 degrees. Let's see if I've got weather compensation when uh, there is a heating only. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn the thermostat to minimum setting on the cylinder. The hot water zone valve right there should close. It closed. Display on the boiler shows central heating only. And as you can see, it drops in temperature because we're running on weather comp. So the flow is actually only 53 degrees, now 52. All seems to be working fine. Success, I guess. If you buy an ideal Vogue, what are you doing installing an S-Plan? You buy a top of the range boiler that can do hot water priority and that can work much more efficiently. Stop installing an S-Plan. 
get just one of those normally open hot water priority valves and do a full hot water priority setup. So your clients will be more, much more happy, uh, the system will be much more efficient, uh, the comfort levels will be much better. There's only benefits to that. If anything from what I've shown you in this video is still unclear or confusing, I'm gonna post links to the schematics below in this video, wiring schematics and system diagrams. And please feel free to comment, feel free to ask questions. And if it has been helpful, please subscribe. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.